Hello everyone. Hi everyone. And welcome back to the Dog and Partridge, a place of fine homecraft tales. If you haven't met him before, this is my world famous brother, Alan Partridge. Yeah. If you haven't met him before, this is my brewmaster brother, Dave Partridge. Good day. Good day. Welcome to the Dog and Partridge, where there are quite a few dogs in here today. <laughs> we, have, we have the company of, uh, of the dog. Lady man, what's pee? <laughs> See you later, dog. See you, dog. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, reason why I say good day, we're going to start the day, bro, with um, a Cooper's kit. Cooper, I'd be Australian then, mate. Yeah, mate, that's got it. There you go. It's that one there. Oop. It's Makes a one tin kit. Uh, uh, I think it all comes in one tin then. Yes. Cooper's uh, 86 day Pilsner. Why is it called 86 days, bro? Well, this is quite an interesting fact, actually. Um, Thomas Cooper right, yeah. uh, set sail from Plymouth in 1852 Ooh. to start a new life with his family in Adelaide, Australia. And it took 86 days to get there. Well, it's truth, mate. <laughs> and this is a brooding homage to that uh, very trip. Right. So, um, easy, uh, cheap kit? This kit is, like I say, a wanting kit. Mm -hmm. um, you get this anywhere between about 11, 9, 5, 30, Ooh. 9, 5. Oh, yeah. Um, it, you do have to add an enhancer with it. So you can add sugar with it. You can have a spray malt with it. I went down the route of having a, a bag of malt extract with it. For right, about yeah. a fiver. Cool. So that pushes up to about 18, 9, 5. Salt whack. Good luck, isn't it? What are we getting, 40 pints? Yeah. Lovely, jolly. Right. Well, he's in pie, all his money. Shall we try and taste it? We'll try and taste it. This is it. And I'm going to put it through the chiller, through the corner cake. Uh, and, uh, yeah. This is what you want on a nice sort of day like day. It's lovely, it's lovely here in being big, isn't it? You can feel the notch. Cool. And it is crystal clear, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah, lovely. lovely. Oh, it's got quite a good nose. Yeah, it's got a sweet mockiness to it, I think. I think we'll like this. Oh. Wow, mate, that is ripper. That's just what you want on a nice sunny day while you're having a barbecue. Mm. That's brilliant. Yeah. And considering it's just a malt kit, mm. that's got quite a nice rounded full flavour, hasn't yeah, it? Nice rounded full flavour, quite a little bit sweetness and maltiness, like it says it is. On that's the, on probably the why I really, because I tend to like the sweeter ones a bit more. That is, um, yeah. That's a good, good, nice all round pilsner. There's there's absolutely like nothing wrong with that yeah. at all. And even goes as far as a 10 out of 10, bro. It's, mm. it's fab. Fab. I oh, definitely yeah, get that 10 out of 10 for a cheap kit. Basic, well done. straightforward, lovely, golden, crisp. It's quite nice and crisp, mm. isn't it? So it's not too heavy on the back of the tongue there. Mm. It's just a subtle dryness. Yeah, it's there. not It's not like a big IPA here no. or anything like that. But yeah, it's nice. It's cracking. Well cracking. done, guys. Well yeah. done, guys. So, that was swiftly done. Beer number two. Beer number two. Well, we're going to start Ooh. explaining about part mash kits. Because my next two kits are part mash kits from um, Shop for Embro. This is good, because I know nothing about brewing, really. <laughs> so what you need for a part mash kit, really, firstly, other than all the other equipment you've got for your normal tin kits, is a, a, a container, a boiler, a stove top, big pan, something old 15 litres of water, anyway. I use a Pico. Uh, that's this thing here, isn't it, bro? That's it. This is Pico. It looks like a big bucket, doesn't it? It's a big plastic bucket. But if you look in there, though, It's all a bit mucky, and it's ankling it out, and it's It's got in. an element in the bottom, hasn't it? Yeah. Basically. Well, it gets, does get a bit mucky as well. With with you keep on constantly boiling in there, it will taint taint the, the plastic. Where, where you boil uh, yeah, anything yeah. else, it's, yeah. it's going to get you a bit of colouring up, coloration on there. So presumably, uh, what do you fit on here then, Ray? Well, you fit a sensor there. It controls the temperature. And this is where um, I'm going to explain where we went wrong with the next kit. Okey dokey. <laughs> right. So right. just put that on one side a second, and let's get one of these part mash kits on the on the bar there. Yeah? Right. Then. Which one do you want, bro? That one there, look. This big one here. Yeah. So, here we go, I'll just, uh, there you go, part match kit. Well, really, it's, it's everything you need in one of these kits. You've got labels, Ooh. you've got instructions, you've got ops to have throughout the boil. But what you do is you start off with, you put some water in that Pico, oh, you yeah. get your muslin bag, I must be careful how you say that, muslin bag. Muslin. And, and you in, put in, in. bag of grain bag of in grain. there. Like that. Right, obviously take it out of the plastic. Okay, okay. And then you pop that into your 15 litres of water. Into the pico. Into the pico. Okay, okay. How do you do that? Do you just drop it in there or does it hang it off the side? Or? No, you drop it in there, just you tie a little knot around the top. Okay, okay. Drop it in there. Right, yeah. 67 degrees for 30 minutes. Is and it has to be that accurate, does it? It, it helps. Okay, yes. Right, yeah. Now, to do that, off camera here, down here, yep. I've got one of these. Don't know if I can help you that. There you go. Might be able to see that. That's there. a digital controller, and obviously you can control the temperature quite well. It's 25. It's 25. So you what they did, you put that into the back of your boiler, and you walk away, wait, wait, while it gets to 67. Right, yeah. 
You drop your grain in, you walk away for half hour. Okay, just leave it. And just leave it at 67 degrees. Okay. And the problem is, if you're like me, and you was an idiot that day, because you're distracted by the neighbours falling out, something like that. <laughs> that's about. But anyway, as you can see, I left it on this previous setting. I don't know if you can see that from there, but that's it at 98. 98. Mm. That's gonna boil the bugger out, isn't it? <laughs> I did realise around about 80 degrees. Okay. Um, but it does say any fluctuation in when you're steeping the grains is going to result in the... A uh, different beer. The, well, in the like difference of the beer, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And obviously, the malt, the, 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 I still went ahead. Still put me ops in at certain times throughout the book. Okay. And also in this kit, you get two big bags of, oh, of malt nice. extract. That's these babies here, look. So that's them. Big bag of malt extract. Same sort of thing. You get a bag of yeast, you get a bag of pure brew, and you even get, hello, to be on the floor. Hello, to You even get some findings. Right, so basically everything in this tub you could possibly need, apart from the equipment, to make your beer. Basically, yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, good kits, really. Uh, 24 night fire some of them, 22 night fire some of them. Uh, there's a full range of shop, on shop for own brew there. They are releasing new kits. Uh, I should be doing this one shortly, but there is some new kits on there, some new replica range. Hell's Bells, Jewel and Pilsner. Ooh, look forward to that one. Look forward to that one in a few weeks' time. Well, a bit longer than a few weeks' time. Yeah. Right, so that's a kit. Now, this explains <laughs> what went wrong with the next beer. <laughs> <laughs> this explains the colour of my beer. So, what should this beer have been, Brad? It's, well, it's, it is, I think you've got the box down there, big, bold Irish red. He's, he's making me work hard. He's got to work for all his beer today. It's a shame, isn't it? Big Chief Irish Pale Ale. Right. World Heritage beers. Mm, right, That's yeah. his, from his World Heritage range. A rich Heritage amber colour and multi flavour is provided by Munich and Crystal Malts. These are matched with a blend of international hops, including, I can't even pronounce that one. Uh, you, you, you cannot, I think. Uh, Equinot or you cannot, or something right, like that. To provide a chocolate burst of flavour, a powerful and balanced pale ale, which is distinctly Irish. Well, it is pale, actually. I thought when it said Irish, I thought it was going to be a red, but no. And wasn't there, he does say on the box there. Oh, well, I might have got it right then, after all. It says it's pale ale, ale, mate, it's not yeah. red. Oh, well. Slipped up again. You see, he was he was on that the other day, saying it should have been red and it came out pale, but the box clearly says it's, it's a pale ale. ale. <laughs> And it's nice, clear, bright, pale ale. I, I must have got mixed up with another kit there. I think well, it's yeah. red, but it's not. Okay, but is this the one you did accidentally go a bit wrong with? This is in the one I did actually steep the grains at, uh, at quite a considerably higher temperature. Like I said, I didn't notice when it got to about 80 degrees. I switched the boiler off and let it cool down. But you know, hopefully, you know, I never affected you know it too much. a cracking nose to it. That's a good oppy nose there, you know, isn't it? And you can already tell, from, from the last kit we tried, it was absolutely fantastic. Nothing wrong with it. But you can already tell there's more of a rounded smell to this. Yeah. Because it's actually been part grain, you know, so let's go for it, bro. Let's go for it. Cheers. And the smoothness there packs with a good hot punch. You're gonna like that one more because that's this isn't oh. as sweet as the last one. It's it is more hoppy and more punchy. Oh, that's good, that. Yeah, that's good, though, though, isn't it? There's and a good hotness punch. It's not overpowering. And there's a nice rounded balance. And the smoothness is, is really is really great. Now then, uh, I thought so. <laughs> What's that? I thought it tasted a little bit strong. It says it's 5.3 here. Oh. And I, if my brother's maybe done the kit wrong, it might be even a bit stronger. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. 5.3? Well, you're I'm, not, I'm you're not driving anywhere, so I'm not driving anywhere. Big girls, but that's 5.3. Damn. Second bit then. Damn. Oh, isn't it? Hey, you're like, dear Lord. Hey, it's lovely that, bro. So, not much of a disaster as I thought it was going to be. No, it's nothing wrong with that. That's hey. a fantastic beer. Oh, I started walking along and I thought it was red, but it's not. It's, it's pale ale, so I should give myself a 10 out of 10. It smells good. It's pale. It tastes fab. It's got that, that nice dry aftertaste. Mm. Bit of a punch here. Not mm. as sweet as the last one. No. Um, yeah, cracking, 10 out of 10 for me, bro. Yeah, definitely. Oh, oh, two 10 out of 10 beers. Are we doing a third beer? Yes, of course we are. Have we got more waffle, or are we straight into the beer? We're straight into the beer. Come on. Well, it? Well, um, well, it says waffle beer. Waffle beer. <laughs> now then, this one, next one, I did actually originally put into a pressure barrel. Okay. So I made it, it's another part of the kit, Lindon Pride. Did actually make it put into a pressure barrel. Right, yeah. About two days later, I walked in here, 
and it smelled a bit beery, as it often does in here, but it smelled more, <laughs> more beery than ever. Coffee and I looked at one of my barrels and found out it, it actually looked like it got about half the contents in it should have done. Oh no. Disaster. Basically, yeah. basically we'd had a seepage. <laughs> the ground was very moist. Oh. Caused by a little tiny hole in the bottom of the Did we have slight flooding in the day? No, just a, just a little <laughs> tiny moistness to the floor. Okay, okay. Uh, little, little, tiny, little tiny hole in the, in the bottom of the uh, PB. Okay, okay. So what I did was, I thought, well, how am I going to save this beer? Right. I thought, well, I can put it into a corner cake, and as long as I get all the air out that's on top of the beer and replace that with the CO2 nitrogen mix, I should be saved. Okay. Obviously, what I've done when I put it in the pressure barrel is put a bit of sugar in there to build the pressure up. Right. Yeah. So what you normally do with a corner cake, you don't do that. No. So it will, will not be clear. Right, yeah. But it should be. Should be. Right. Well, 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 we'll find out. So anyway, I've managed to save it. Or this not. is um, part of the tribute range again. This is uh, in the style of London Pride. Now, London Pride, bro. I don't know what it is with London Pride. It's a nice big red label here on the bottle. Partial match kit. Makes 40 pints. That's all it says on there. London Pride, isn't it? London Pride, isn't it? London Pride is. Um, well, it, I don't know about London Pride, it always reminds me of buses. I don't know it, why. It's got it. that London, London summer bus. feel to it, hasn't it, really? London <laughs> bus type feel to it. Nah. Never been one of my favourite beers. In think, a bottle, so. it's 4.7%. Okie dokie. Right. It's Obviously, we've got a bottle to. Uh, uh, see if we've got anywhere near. Compare it. See if I have saved it or not. Okay. Obviously, it's a replica, so it, with the changes in water, changes in yeast strains, and everything, it won't be an exact no. copy. It'll be somewhere. But we have had some of these style. Th these these uh, style kits that have been bob on. Yep. The Hobgoblin Gold. Yep. That was fantastic. That was about as close as I've ever tasted. You know, some of the yep. some of the stout ones and all that. They're great. They're fantastic yep. kits. Okay, so like you said, it's not going to be clear. No, because I put no. sugar into the yeah. into the okay. mix. Just right. Trying to build some pressure up. So is London Pride? I mean, it doesn't actually say what it is. Whether it's a light beer or an amber beer or what? Does it really? Well, it's probably out to me and see if we're in any way that's cool or not. Tell you what, that's looking quite close to me. I know, obviously, that one's clear, but colour wise, colour wise, we're not far off there. Yeah, go. Cool. Okay, Julie. There's a strong mould that's out of the door. There, there is on this one, you know, to be honest. No, there is, isn't there? About <laughs> <laughs> the same, there's a strong mouldness. Actually, the bottles were probably a little bit more malty. That, your, your one's a little bit sweet. That might be something to do with. The sugar, isn't it? Sort yeah, of thing, maybe. But right, let's go for yours first, then. Cheers again. It's fine. Um, it's not my favourite. I must. Admit. It's not, but then London Pride is not my favourite beer either. You will have a taste of that. So one, bro. I'm thinking it's going to be quite close, personally. You reckon? I do. It's you remember one of our local pubs used to have London Pride on? We never quite really. Thought it was on or off. Never really. warm to it. Not very really warm to it. The bottle is probably a little bit more malty. Mm. It's not one of my favourite beers. It sits heavy with me, to be honest. London Pride does. Yeah, I thought it was better than that. I think I got confused with pedigree with the happy people on the buses, etc. Et yeah, it's, it's, even the even the proper beer I'm not a fan of. So actually, I'd say yours is better. Mm. Because it doesn't taste too much like that. Mm. That is very, very malty. Very malty. Uh, that is probably yeah. an old fashioned, the old beer. fashioned bitter without yeah. a lot of hops in it at all, really. Yeah. And, and I found, and this is how beer styles have moved on, you know. Because once upon a time, it, it, it says on the bottle, London Pride claims to be an award-winning champion beer, champion beer of England. One in what time. year was that? Nineteen seventy-five. Nineteen seventy-five, you know. Mm. Not a fan. Um, I'd actually say yours is better, if I'm going to be honest. Yes. Um, because it's not as heavy or as malty. No. It's a little bit lighter, it's a little bit crisper. Mm. That'll be to do with the sugar and the water differences, mm. like you say. If you like London Pride, then, that's the kit for you. If you don't like London Pride, well, obviously we don't fans out, we don't. Fan of it. What a fan. I'll, I'll give it a solid 7 or 8 out of 10, mate. Mm. It's, no, it's not bad. Mm. You know, I could quite simply, happily sit a pint of that, you know. Oh, I did actually save it by doing that method, so there's, there's another trick. <laughs> if, if you are, you know... Yeah. If you have got it on your PB and you've got a corner keg spare with some gas, yeah, there you go. Sling it in it. Sling it in it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's 
So that's all right, that's two tens in it. What were you reckon for that one, bro? You said, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Mm, yeah, I'm not a fan, basically. Mm. I don't think that's anything to do with the beers, that uh, kit. I think that's the, the style. Because I don't actually like the original beer. No. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, if you've been inspired to do any brewing from our videos, uh, please, please give it a go. It's very, very yeah. easy. Yeah. You do need just some basic kit like yeah. we've shown you today. And um, think until next time, it's goodbye from him. And it's goodbye from him. Keep brewing. Keep brewing.